Good morning. We're going to do something slightly different for the video today. I am going to attempt to do a um, bit of a tutorial on dyeing yarn at home, um, but we're going to be doing it safely. So we're going to be doing it kind of child friendly dyeing, if that makes sense. Um, Arthur's going to come and join me a little bit later on. He wants to dye some yarn inspired by Skylanders colorways. Skylanders colorways, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, I thought I would do a little bit of a tutorial because obviously a lot of us are stuck at home with children at the moment and want to entertain them slightly. So this is completely um, non-toxic dyeing um, and yeah, safe to do with kids. They might need a little bit, little bit of support with some aspects of it, um, but yeah, it's good fun to give it a go. Let me show you what you're going to need. So this is all the equipment that you're going to need. Most of this, apart from possibly the yarn, um, you're going to be able to pick up from your local supermarket um, quite easily when you, whenever you do your food shop. Um, but let me run you through the things that you're going to need. So first of all, obviously, you're going to need some yarn. Now, obviously, as a, a yarn dyer, I've got um, unlimited stocks pretty much of undyed yarn, which I know a lot of you won't have access to. Um, if you do have some undyed yarn, that's fantastic. Um, even if you've got some undyed commercial yarn, that's that would work too. Um, when I first started having a go at dyeing before, way before the shop, etc., I used to use um, Drops Fable in their natural colourway, um, and I used to just wind that into mini skeins and dye those. Um, so you can do that. If you don't have anything undyed at home, it's not a problem. You could always over dye um, some dyed up mini skeins. Pastel colours are probably going to be better if you're looking to over dye something. Um, I've just dug these two out because they're ones that I had and I'm not particularly attached to. Um, so we'll give these a go. Um, it doesn't need to be a semi-solid or anything like that. You could use speckled yarn, you could use um, whatever. I mean, the more busy and variegated it is, the less likely your dyeing is going to show up over top of it. Um, but it kind of depends what you do. Um, and then I've just got this skein as well, which is um, a BFL base, which I don't stock in the shop and it was just a random skein lying around. So I thought we'd give that a go too. The important thing to consider with the yarn is that it needs to be protein based fiber. So it needs to be an animal fiber. Um, so whether that's wool or silk or alpaca or anything like that, they will all work fine. Um, but this won't work with cotton yarn or linen yarn. You need um, different types of dye for that. But anything that's wool based will work really, really well. Um, then the dyes we're going to be using, we're going to use food colouring today. Um, because this means that you don't need any special equipment. You can use, you can dye, what the, you can dye the yarn in um, whatever you've got at home. Your casserole, pots, anything. I'm going to be using... Um, I've got some of these glass Pyrex dishes um, and again, just some more Pyrex dishes here. And they're what we're gonna use today. And these are, these are actually genuinely ones that we use for food. They are nothing to do with dyeing. When I dye professionally, I use um, acid dyes, which are obviously more of a chemical base um, and they're more toxic. And if you use those to dye yarn, you can't then use the same um, the same pots and pans or the same equipment for food. You need to kind of separate equipment if you're going to be dyeing with acid dyes. Um, but today we're going to keep it nice and easy and we're going to use food colouring. This is what I've got. Um, so we've got a little bit of brown gel food colouring. I might not use this, but just so you can see, you know, these would work absolutely fine. Um, and then I've got some blue food colouring and this is just like a liquid one. Um, it's ridiculously out of date, but we're not going to be using it for food, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I've got these. These are my favourite ones for doing this, um, because you've got a good range of colour. These are just Wilson's ones. I picked these up in Hobbycraft, but I'm pretty sure you can get something similar in um, the supermarkets. Um, but if you can't, these type of ones work fine. And as you can see, this came from Tesco's. So, um, these are gel-based ones, and I've just got a range of different colours in there. Again, these are out of date, um, but we're not using them for food, so it doesn't matter. Um, and then the other thing you're going to need is some white vinegar. Um, this is what we use to set the dye into the yarn. Um, so just normal, I mean, as you can see, this one came from Sainsbury's. It doesn't matter. Obviously, other supermarkets are available. Um, but just some 
white vinegar, it's often called distilled malt vinegar, white vinegar, anything like that. Um, I've got, there's another unopened one there. Um, so you need some vinegar. Um, we talked about the pots and pans. I'm just gonna use some glass Pyrex. We're gonna be setting the yarn in the microwave. So it's probably best that you don't use a metal container for this, for this tutorial, if you wanna call it a tutorial. Um, but I'm just gonna use these because um, although having thought about it, I'm not sure these will fit in my microwave. The little ones might, the big one probably won't fit in my microwave. Um, and then the last thing is probably just something to cover your work surfaces with. This is an old cot sheet. Um, I use this when I'm dyeing normally as well, um, just to protect my work surfaces. So that is everything that you're gonna need. One other thing, and this isn't something that you need or have to have, um, but I have been collecting, um, for the purposes of doing this video, I've been saving squeezy bottles, um, like washing up liquid bottles. Um, I've got a barbecue sauce bottle there um, and stuff like that, just um, to make it easier for Arthur to apply the dye. Uh, you obviously don't need that. You could pour it on, you could use a spoon, um, anything, but I just thought these might make it easier for him to apply the dye. Um, if you don't know, Arthur is a six, so he's not particularly grown up yet, if that makes sense. Okay, so the first step is to put the yarn into soak. So what we're gonna do is I've just filled up this bowl with water. You could obviously do this directly in your sink if you wanted to, um, but I'm just gonna do it in a bowl just for the sake of ease, I guess. Um, and we're gonna add a good glug of um, vinegar. Um, there's no exact science to the amount of vinegar you use. It really doesn't matter. Um, we're just gonna add a good glug and then we're gonna put our yarn in. I'm gonna leave the yarn um, skeined up just so that it doesn't all get tangled while it's in there. We will unskein it a little bit later on, but we're just gonna stick this in here, let it soak up all the water. Um, I probably should have unskeined that one because it's quite big, but it will be fine. So yeah, we're just gonna stick that in there and we're gonna leave that to soak. I'm gonna put a bit more water in there. We're gonna leave that to soak for a good kind of half hour, 45 minutes, just to soak up all that vinegar. Okay, so the next step is to mix these dyes into a dye stock. Um, so what we need is just some hot water and some cold water. Um, this is kind of where your child might need help from an adult or if you're not doing it with a child, you should be fine. Um, so we're just gonna take a good chunk of food coloring. Um, I'm just gonna stick it in a measuring jug. We're gonna start, let me do this bit first. Arthur's with me now. We're gonna start with a little bit of hot water. We're aiming for about 300 mils in total. So we're gonna start with about 100 mils of hot water. Purple water. It is purple water. We're gonna give it a good stir to make sure that all of that has dissolved. And then we're gonna top it up with some cold water. Can you manage that one? You lift it up and pour it in? Do you need a bit of help? Is it a bit heavy? Um, so we're gonna aim for about 300 mils. So keep going, keep going, there we go. And then we're just gonna give that a good stir. We can always add more dice, dye, more food dye to make it darker if we need to. But that's pretty good for now. I'm just gonna check the temperature. No, that's fine. And I'm just gonna pop this in one of the bottles. Don't make the mistake I made first time by um, melting your bottle because you only use boiling water. <laughs> right, there we go. And then we just repeat that step for all of the colors. Mm, yummy. So what we're then gonna do is just take the yarn that's been soaking, just unskein it. If you've used pre-made minis, they'll be, um, they'll be all tied up, so that's fine. If you've made your own minis, um, then they, hopefully you've put ties in them. I should have actually said, I will link to a little tutorial about making your own minis. Um, I think it's a knitting expat, knitting expat one, but I will link to that. And we're just gonna pop them in the bowl. I'm gonna put two in this one. So we're just gonna unskein them and lay them out in the bowl. We're not going for any specific effect. This is just for fun and just to create something fun and colorful. So I'm just gonna line the bowl with the yarn like that. 
So there we have it. We've got all our yarn laid out in our bowls. Um, I've just put these two in together. This is the full 100 gram skein. Um, and then these are the minis. And don't forget to subscribe to Mummy's channel. <laughs> Arthur says make sure you've subscribed to my channel. Um, so now we're going to dye them. Okay, so now we're going to dye this one. Arthur's chosen this single mini skein. He's having a little think about what colours he wants to use. And all we're going to do is literally put, apply the dye colours to the yarn and just kind of press it in. No, oh, I've not proud, proud, there we go. That's it. Kind of looks like washing up liquid, doesn't it? So yeah, you can just squirt it on. You can now press it in if you want to. Red. Okay. Now Hang on, the younger one wants to help too. Come here. Oh. Number three, you mean? Because they have three. Now this is where that. it's going to get noisy, I'm afraid, and where it's going to get less professional. Um, there we go. That's it. Right, did you want to add some more colour to that, or are you happy with those colours? Happy. You sure? Okay. Go to that one. That's a watercolour blue is water colour. No, but I'm using it for snowflake. Do you want it all to be blue? No. You're going to put some other colours in there as well. How about these mm, ones? Where's that purple? That's the purple. This one? Yeah. The purple. Sorry. There we go. There's some on the blue. That's fine, you can mix the colours together. Hmm, now... This is going to be from your favourite so I'll add it on my piano. Ah, oh, you need some pink then, don't you? Pink, where's the pink? Where's the pink? Here. Yep. Yeah. Alright, I've got a word. Okay. Pink. And you can mix the colours if you want, and I think a bit of yellow as well. A bit of yellow. Make sure you're pointing it into the pan. Well, it kind of blessed on a black. That's it. You happy with that? Hmm. Need more water. So this is Arthur's creation, and we're just going to press the dye into the yarn. I mean, I'm using my hands. I'm not worried about getting my hands stained. You could use a spoon or you could use... It does food colouring. Exactly. Remember? It's just food colouring. So you could use a spoon if you wanted to. Use whatever um, you want. So you just want to press it in just to see if we can get that colour all the way through. I mean, you can see here that water's a bit murky. So that's not all absorbed in there yet. Um, now, you could turn this over if you wanted to. This is actually looking all right underneath. Um, but you could turn it over to see what's underneath. To see what's underneath. So yeah, I think we'll just flip that one over, and we'll flip that one over, and then we can apply some more dye to the other side if we want to. That's good. I'll apply some fun. more dye to the other side. Go on then. Wow. So this is what it looks like now. This is Arthur's creation. He's quite happy with this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to heat set it. And again, this is where you're probably going to obviously help your children or if you're doing it on your own then we won't need help so what we need to do is cover this and pop it in the microwave for kind of a couple of minutes right this is my creation i'm going to do something slightly different with it now just for a little bit of added extra that you can do i'm going to take the food colorings and i'm actually just going to apply some little bits directly onto the yarn almost like speckling I guess so I'm literally just going to dip this in here and I'm just going to pop a few bits oh. in here it will give us some slightly vibrant pops of different areas um, oh, and I'm going to do it with that. the <laughs> Arthur's disappointed he didn't do it with his yours is looking amazing though so I'm going to do it with the purple and I'm going to do it with the pink and then I'm going to do it with the blue because they're the three colours that I've put into this um, and we'll just see what happens, really. 
that's the fun of this. Excuse all the background noise. I told you this wasn't going to be a professional um, tutorial. <laughs> so then we just need the blue. Um, and again, I'm just going to dip a, dip a spoon in there and we're just going to stick some of this in here. I've only done it on the one side. Jasper, shush. <laughs> Um, what do they say? Never work with kids and sh kids and animals. Um, there we go. So then we're just going to cover and microwave this one as well. So conveniently, my little containers come with a lid. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop this in the microwave. And we're just going to try it for a minute to start with. So this has had one minute in the microwave. And what we're going to look for is we want that water inside. Oh, hang on. Okay. So this has had one minute in the microwave and what we're looking for is for the water to be clear. And as you can see, that isn't clear yet. So we're gonna cover that and put that back in again for another minute. So this one has had a second go in the um, microwave. That's the word I'm after. And look, as you can see, the water is still not quite clear. So we're gonna put it back in again. It's getting hot to touch now. Um, so it's obviously very close to being there. Now, the important thing is not to just shove it on for 10 minutes because you're likely to burn the yarn. Um, all the time we've got water in here and we've got a lid on, we should be pretty safe, but that's the risk. Um, the other thing is that I'm working with superwash yarns. Um, so I'm at very, very, very low risk of felting them. Superwash yarns are treated so that they don't tend to felt, which makes this even easier because you don't need to worry so much about um, moving it around and the heat and that kind of thing. But for now, this needs to go back in again. It's had about three minutes in total. And as you can see, the water is clear. So we're happy that that is now set. So I'm going to do the same process with the other yarns. Um, and then I'll show you what we do next. So this is the yarn that I've been doing. It's going good and I'm done. And then the final step, once the yarn has cooled down, you don't want to do this when it's too hot because you'll burn your fingers, obviously. You want to give it a soak. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to, I'm just using some of this. This is what I use generally when I soak any of my knitwear or anything like that. So just a little squirt of that in the water. Um, you don't need to use a wool wash at all. Um, you could just do it in plain water and it would be fine. You could even put a little bit of washing up liquid, but then you'd need to rinse it. Um, whereas this, I don't need to rinse. So that's good. Um, also, as you can see, I have succeeded in dyeing my fingers funny colours, but that doesn't bother me. I'm well used to it, but you could wear gloves if you need to. But I mean, the thing to remember is that we're using food colouring, so it's not toxic. It's not going to do me any harm. OK, so what we need to do is transfer the yarn into the bowl. Um, if you struggle to get it back into a nice loop, if it's a bit tangled, then what you want to look for is you just want to look for your ties and then that will help you work out which way which way the strands are supposed to be going and stuff like that as it happens this came out quite nicely and literally all we're going to do is just pop that in there and give it a good soak um it doesn't need to sit in there for ages you can just give it a rinse out really it doesn't need masses as you can see the water's still clear so we're not losing any dye which means everything is set and everything is fine. So I'll do this with all of the colourways that we've dyed.
and then <laughs> and then the final step is to um, hang it up to dry. Now, as I'm sure many of you know, yarn can take a long time to dry, and this is just one of the tricks that I use to make it a lot quicker. Um, when I'm dyeing my actual yarn for the shop, um, I have a spin dryer, which I use, but I'm imagining that most of you don't have a spin dryer at home. So this is what I used to do before I got my spin dryer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the yarn and we're just gonna lie it out on the towel um, you can mix the colours as long as everything's set properly, which it should have done. You can mix the colours without too much concern. Um, and we're just going to lie it out on the on the towel like this. Uh, hello. <laughs> right, and then what we're going to do, if Arthur can get off, and I can show you without just putting my arm in the way, um, we're going to roll it up in the towel like this. Oh. And then Arthur jump. is going to jump on it. Exactly. This is fun! Daddy, you're going to jump on yarn! That's what you're going to jump on yarn! And then we repeat the same with the other one as well. And my children have disappeared. Oh, here we go. They're back to jump on the yarn. Come on, Chappie! Jump on the yarn! And as you can see by Arthur's feet, um, the water is actually getting soaked into the towel and it just means they dry a lot quicker. Who did that one? I would have this one. And then once they've finished having fun doing that, you just unwrap the yarn and then hang this up to dry. And it will dry a lot quicker because you will have squeezed out most of the moisture. And there we go. That is how you dye yarn. Um, I've got all the yarn here, which we're just going to go and hang up to dry. Um, don't worry if some of them look a little bit a little bit tangled. That will be much easier to sort out once it's dry. But I wanted to show you these two in particular, because um, these are the ones that were already coloured. Um, can't really skein yarn when it's wet, but just so you can kind of see. This is the skein that was red, and you can see we've actually managed to change the colour of that quite a lot. Um, and then this one is the one that was grey. And again, we've really changed the colour of that, given it a lot more dimension and changed it up. I really like this one in particular. Um, so it's a great way to over dye any yarn you've got that you're not in love with as well. Anyway, I'm going to go hang these up to dry. Um, hopefully they will be dry and I will be able to skein them up um, before I need to, before I put this video up tomorrow so that you'll be able to get a good idea of how they look dry. But I hope you've enjoyed our little, um, our little yarn dyeing tutorial video, um, as chaotic as it got. <laughs> Um, but the boys have loved it and at no point have they had to come into contact with anything in the way of dangerous kind of chemicals or dyes or anything like that and um, they've been able to do it mostly themselves with a little bit of help. Here are the results of our dyeing. Um, I'm trying to get the best light to show you the colours properly so excuse the fact that they're on a piece of card. Um, but these are the th these no these are the three that Arthur dyed the three little minis um, that these were the undyed ones that he dyed and you can see how effective the food colouring has been it's really pretty we've got lots of like little darker spots there as well yeah really effective this is the one that I dyed and again even with the food colouring we've managed a few little sort of almost speckles um, and it's just going to be really pretty and then these two are the two that we over dyed so this skein was the red skein um which i think we added quite a lot of yellow to and also some blue and other bits of pieces um so i mean that's really come out nicely um and this one is the gray skein and again it's just really effective even having over dyed um a previously colored mini anyway i hope you've enjoyed our little um kind of tutorial um, for dyeing with food colouring and if you do give it a go then please um, let me know if you're on Instagram or anything like that then by all means tag me um, you can tag me as Giddy Yarns on Instagram and I'll be able to see your dyeing attempts